Hello, welcome to 90% Knitting. This is episode 321. I'm Lisa, also known as Fiber Nymph on social media, and today is Wednesday, September 4th. Happy September. Fall is officially here in my world, even though the autumnal equinox has not happened. September 1st is the beginning of meteorological fall, so I always go by that because I love fall. I love September. I probably love September because it's the beginning of fall. It's also my birthday month, but my birthday is not till the end of the month. And I think it's also always been my favorite because I associate it with back to school and as far back as being a kid, I loved going back to school. That's pretty much off my radar these days, but still I think the, you know, the association, the pleasant association still remains. So anyway, happy September. I hope you are enjoying the beginning of your fall or your spring if you're in the southern hemisphere your season is changing as well just opposite mine so we're gonna just jump right in i wanted to record today mainly because i have a bunch of prizes to award and i didn't want those to languish i don't have a lot of knitting to share with you today but i have major knitting to share with you which you can probably see what it already is so we're just gonna start there my soldatna is finished I am so happy with this sweater. I may say that another two dozen times while I talk about this. I love this sweater. I am so thrilled with how it turned out. I'm going to back the camera up so that you can get a better view of it, hopefully. I may have to adjust things a bit, but let's see how this goes. So, okay. Here, oh, okay. If I squat, we'll see how long my knees can handle this. Um, yeah, there we go. The Soldatna by Jennifer Steingass. I'm sorry, I'm at a weird angle, so it's probably hard for you to... Well, it's hard for me to do that. Okay, yeah. I, oh, <laughs> my knees won't let me do that for a prolonged period of time. I'll bring you closer again. Okay, so let me tell you how this all ended up working out. Picking up from the last time I talked about it. When I, when I talked to you last week, I showed you my initial beginning of this, which was in different yarn. Um, instead of this deep, whiny color and the tealy color, I had a much more variegated version of each of those. As I showed you last week, the color contrast was just not what it needed to be with those two colors, and so I had decided that I was going to re-dye these two colors, but focus on those deep colors that I was seeing in my mind and um, and get more contrast, which worked. So when you saw it last week, I believe I had gotten through the very beginning part of it, I think. Did I? Oh my gosh, maybe. Now I'm, I'm kind of forgetting where I was with this. I don't remember. I don't remember if you saw the very beginning of it or if I just posted it to Instagram, to be quite honest with you. Suffice it to say, I started it over. <laughs> I dyed up new yarn and I started it over and I loved it. I mean, I could just see even from right here in this section that it was going to work so much better and it did. So I've got, um, I wish I could totally remember the time frame on this, but anyway. I got all of this, you know, the top part of this was done. I, w I went through the body. Um, I did add one pattern repeat to the length. I probably could have afforded to have added at least one more, if not two. But in blocking, I did block it fairly aggressively to get some extra length out of it, and it's worked fine. So I'm happy with it there. Um, as far as other modifications, the only thing I did differently, I'm trying to think. I already told you about, oh, I did tell you about this because when I recast on, I cast on with more stitches in the neckline so it's not as tight up as it initially was. I made the size 48. Um, in retrospect, I kind of thought when I first blocked this that I maybe could have gone down a size, but now that I'm completely finished with it, I'm wearing it, 
I think I made the right size choice. It's a little extra roomy, but it's supposed to have positive ease. So I think that's more the issue because I'm not used to having this much positive ease, but it fits very comfortably and it is a little flowy, which is sort of nice since it's cropped. It's not clinging to me because that would not be a pleasant thing. <laughs> For me anyway okay so I modified that I told you about that I didn't do any modifications to the body other than adding that extra body repeat um, I think when I did the ribbing at the very bottom instead of starting with the knit to purl to I did purl to knit to so that the pearls fell the pearls fell in the shorter section instead of the longer section. I think that's how it would have worked out if I would have done it as written. But otherwise, I did the body completely as it was written. Um, the sleeves were a different story because in my mind, I had all along planned on making the sleeves longer than how they were written because this <laughs> we'll jump ahead now. This is how they're written. So this was the end right here before this purple band is where they were taken off from the body. I separated the sleeves out. And then when I picked them back up, you were just supposed to basically pick up and then go into this ribbing section. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to add more length because I didn't think I was going to like the short sleeves on this sweater. So... <laughs> I'll insert a picture here of what I initially did. As you can see, I did end up adding some of this body patterning, this, to the sleeves. I added one and a half repeats of that to the sleeves, and then I replicated this ribbing, I just didn't make it as long, to the bottom of that. So I did one sleeve and then I tried it on and I thought, well, I think it looks good. So then I did the other one and I finished it and I was excited because it was finished and I tried it on and I'm like, oh, I don't think I like this. <laughs> and after considering it, the more I thought about it, the more I realized what the issue was. Had it been a long, full length, full normal length sweater, I think had adding that extra length to the sleeves would have been fine. But since it's not, it's a shorter sweater, it's already got the illusion of being wider than it is long. And so, well, it's not really the illusion, although it probably is. I mean, like I said, I blocked this pretty well. But having that extra patterning here that blended into the body pattern, because it came down, so it was like almost a continuation the whole way across here of that body pattern. Now your eye definitely saw this sweater as being much wider than it was longer. And that was what was bothering me. I didn't like that look at all. So then I looked back at a picture I had taken of it before I did the sleeves at all. Cause I took a picture of it when I had just finished the body. So I'll put that picture in here. And looking at that picture, I realized I really actually did like it without anything extra on the sleeves and that I just needed to do that ribbing. And so that's what I ended up doing. On Sunday night, I ripped out the first sleeve, went back, picked up and just did the ribbing, tried it on and I was like, yes, I like this. This is what looks best. And so then, hmm, actually maybe that was Monday night might have been Monday night. Sorry, it was a holiday weekend, so I'm all goofed up on my days. Um, that was Monday night. Then yesterday morning, I ripped out the second sleeve, redid it with just the ribbing, and tried it on. And I knew I had made the right decision. So I'm very, very happy with this. In between all of that, before, while I was still trying to make the decision about whether I like the sleeves or not the way I initially did them, I had done a really quick and dirty blocking, which when I do that, I basically, especially if it's a superwash wool, I can only do it if it's superwash. I soak it and then I spin out the water in my spin dryer and then I throw it in the dryer <laughs> to get it dry, mostly dry, and then I'll lay it out and I'll kind of smooth it out and flat. That's not a good way to block it because things are not smooth, but it, it was able to give me, it settled stitches down essentially and let me see it a little bit more true. And again, I just looked at him like, no, no, this is not 
not working. So anyway, last night I did the real blocking and you know soaked it and I had it laying out all night. It's funny when I first put it on this way the back was still kind of damp, not wet but like not completely dry and it felt kind of good because I was warm so <laughs> but now it's just to that point where I feel a little humid so I'm not sure if I'll be leaving this on the whole podcast or not but at any rate blocking it normally the way you're supposed to block something really did make a huge difference um, the for the most part all of my stitches that were kind of wibbly wobbly settled down the only place I'm noticing sorry I need to be able to show you <laughs> is right here across my boobs um, this section like the sand part is still kind of puffy um, and it's not gonna lay flat because I think my tension was off a little bit there otherwise though my tension was really good in my color work with my stranding and everything I hardly have any puckering at all. There's actually a few spots where, let's see, yeah, right here you can see one where the stitches are actually too loose because <laughs> I was making my tension a little too loose. Um, but I figure over time they'll probably work themselves out. I'm not super worried about that. In general, I am ecstatic about how this turned out. And I love the color choices that I ended up with. So. I will just say right now, I'm going to be putting all four of these colors in the shop. If you would like to make one out of this color scheme, obviously you could swap them around and have this part the green and the other part the Merlot or whatever, but I just, I want to offer this. Actually, this is not Merlot. It has my Merlot color in it, but it's not Merlot. Um, it's a tonal. Anyway, I'm going to have these in the shop. They're not there now. Um, hopefully before the weekend I will have them up in there to order they won't be ready to ship but I'll be able to get them out within you know a couple of weeks to you so there will be that but um, yeah so this one I have named mirth and this tealy green I've named reverie and then the body part is done mainly in sand and then this background here is my silver gray. So sand and silver gray are two semi-solids that I always have. Mirth and Reverie are the two new colors that I ended up doing specifically for this that drew from the initial yarns that I used and drew those deep colors out of there. It is exactly what I wanted. I'm so happy with it. I told you, you're going to hear me say this a million times. I think this is maybe my favorite color work sweater I've ever made. I haven't made a ton of color work sweaters, but I enjoyed this so very much. Even with all the ripping out and re-knitting that I had to do, I just enjoyed the process of knitting this sweater. It was very addictive. Um, I never got bored. There was never any slog, and I think that's the key. Initially, I thought, man, do I really want to knit an all-over color work sweater? Like, aside from the fact that I thought an all-over color work sweater in DK weight would be way too hot, which I don't think it will be. I mean, I'm sitting here, granted I have a breeze coming in, but like, I don't feel too, too hot right now. And it's obviously going to get colder, but I just thought that was going to be a really dense fabric. But honestly, I love it. And I thought, you know, doing color work the whole way through would be tedious, but it was not. It actually kept it going really well. It's funny, the body and the sleeves... Well, no, the body and then the knitting of the sleeves the second time took me watching the three Hobbit movies once the whole way through, and then the, I watched the first movie again and half of the second. That's how long it took me to knit all of this. I measure things in Hobbit movies, apparently. So I just, I enjoyed it. It was wonderful to knit. The pattern's very well written. I didn't have any problems following it. Um, and in fact, you know, this is one of those cases with the sleeves where knitting it as written was actually the best choice because you know me, if you've been watching the podcast for any amount of time, you know, I very rarely follow a pattern as written. I'm always tweaking something or going rogue and I didn't do that on this sweater and it really turned out well. 
it is definitely a length that's shorter than my comfortable length. I don't tend to wear crop things, but again, since I blocked it aggressively, it is longer than it was originally meant to be in the pattern, but not long enough that you can't tell, like, is that supposed to be cropped or is it just a weird length sweater? I don't feel like it's that length. That was what I wanted to avoid. So I'm thrilled with it. I just I don't know what else to say I really really enjoyed this it was it was so much fun and now I want to knit like all of the color work crop sweaters with color work all over them which is insane I won't do that but I really want to so I knit this out of my beguiled base which is my DK weight base that has sparkle in it and I don't know if you can see that if you're yeah you're kind of getting this you can see the sparkle as I move I just love it because it's not like ah, in your face sparkle but I think it's gonna be such a fun thing to wear especially around the holidays because it just has that little extra sparkle and the colors I think are very um, they're holiday ish without being in your face red and green Christmas because it's not red and green it's this you know reddish purple and this tealish blue green and that's just that next step off of that but then I could wear it right now and I think it would be perfectly suitable and you probably if you go to Rhinebeck you'll probably see me in this probably I don't know I have so many sweaters to choose from for Rhinebeck this year that's insane maybe I'll just take them all and like go in the bathroom and change every couple of hours I don't know it'll probably be too hot to be wearing any sweater at all in needles up I don't know we'll see but oh my gosh I love this sweater so much just just so lucky love it love it love it I still have to have the the happy final pictures taken of it because again it just came off the blocking towel right before I started to record um, I don't know what I'm gonna wear under it yet I have not had time to make the tunic that I can visualize in my mind. I know exactly what I want to make. I just haven't had time to do that. Um, and like right now, this black tank top that I have underneath, that's actually not bad. This looks better than anything else that I have put on underneath it. Um, and I actually did try it on without anything under it. But I haven't I haven't done that since I've reblocked it. And it might be okay now, but initially when I had first finished it with the weird sleeves and I tried it on and I showed my husband and I didn't have anything on underneath it. He's like, well, it's pretty. He's like, it's sort of short. <laughs> I'm like, well, it's supposed to be a cropped sweater. And he's like, but you would yell at me if I wore something like that. <laughs> and I had to point out to him that there's a huge difference between a cropped sweater that's meant to be cropped and a sweatshirt of which he owns a few that probably fit him back in junior high but they don't anymore and when he wears them they come up to his belly button I'm like there's a difference between those <laughs> I think I've actually gotten him to purge those sweatshirts from his wardrobe or else they're in his just like work around the house and get dirty working on motorcycles piles but yeah yeah, there's a difference, hon. There's there's a difference there. So anyway, he's like, I think that needs to be about six inches longer. I think he was kidding, <laughs> but whatever. I'm happy with it. I love it. I'm so thrilled that it's done. I'll have it with me this weekend at New Jersey. I probably will not be wearing it. It's supposed to be in the mid to high 70s. I will be in a barn um, where usually barns aren't super well ventilated when you're in the middle and I am in the middle so I don't know we'll see but it will be there it will at least be on display I have dyed up all the yarn all four of these colors both in beguiled the sparkly and my bona fide base so if you aren't into the sparkle you can still get the DK weight in these colors <sighs> so happy all right I'm gonna quit saying that now and I don't think there's anything else I wanted to tell you about it um, I knit the whole thing, this version of it, in 13 days though. That may be a record for me with a sweater. It's definitely a record for me with a colorwork sweater. 
This is also my fourth sweater I've finished this year. Again, that is definitely a record for me. Um, yeah, it was a little under three weeks if you count my original start that I took out, so. And yardage requirements, that's what I wanted to tell you about, and I didn't bring my paper in here, but the yardage requirements for the sweater in the size that I knit were almost spot on. This, my color one, I literally, I used the exact yardage that the pattern called for. My color two, I, add, I used, color two was the sand color. I used, I think maybe 15 yards more, but that makes sense because I made the body a little bit longer. Color three, which was this teal, I actually used less than what the pattern called for, which is a little odd, I'm not sure why, but whatever. I may have missed out on some of the, I was weighing my leftovers to figure out how much I used, and there may be just like a little tiny ball of it somewhere, because I ended up with leftover, you know, bits from when I ripped the sleeves out that I didn't weigh or something. And then lastly, the silver, I think I used maybe 20 yards more than what it called for. So all in all, I think the, the yardage that is in the pattern, at least for my size, the size 48 inch was pretty accurate. So that's good to know. Um, and that puts my yardage finished of projects for the year up over 19,000 yards already for this year. I can't believe it. I've had such a prolific year. <sighs> I am in just such a good mood over this sweater. It has me so, so happy. Okay, we're gonna move on from the sweater now. Although, honestly, there's just not a whole lot more <laughs> to tell you about knitting because I haven't knit much more. I've been pretty dedicated to this sweater. But I did cast on my socks from my hand, from my hand spun. And then I ripped a whole bunch. <laughs> ah, so anyway, here's my yarn. So this was the Bistro Mathics colorway from the Classy Squid Fiber Co. Opulence Fiber that I bought at, I believe I bought it at Needles Up Rhinebeck last year. Um, and I spun it up, it's a three ply. I got like 433 yards once it was soaked. So it's a little bit lighter of a fingering weight than what I usually knit socks out of. It felt much lighter though than I thought it was. So I went down to US zeros. And that's always different when I go down to zeros because I usually knit my socks on US ones. But I went down to zeros and I had initially decided that I was going to use a pattern from my queue. And I chose the Whiz Bang socks by, I think Sarah Shu. Um, I don't know, I'll put it in the show notes. That was the pattern I originally chose because it's a slip stitch pattern. And from my experience, slip stitch patterns are really nice when you have variegated yarns because it helps show off the colors rather than them just all getting mushed together. So that is what I started. And I decided since this was such light yarn and I was doing it on zeros, I was gonna do the 72 stitch sock. Again, I usually do 60 or 64. So I started this and that pattern's written toe up. <laughs> That's the other thing. And rather than rewrite the pattern and do it cuffed down, which is my preference, I thought, okay, I will do a toe up. I have not done a toe up sock in a very long time. I actually ended up having to look up how to do um, Nancy's, what's the cast on? Is it Nancy? The magic cast on, whatever. I I'm sorry, I'll put that in the show notes too because I'm totally blanking on it. Judy, not Nancy, Judy, <laughs> Judy's magic cast on. Um, I had to look it up because I started, I'm like, oh, I'm doing this really wrong. <laughs> so I, I figured it out again. It was, it came back to me. So I did that cast on increased so that I ended up with 72 stitches. This is just reminding me that this was the top of the sock whenever I was doing the patterning. Um, started doing that and then started doing the patterning and I got into it about an inch and I realized that the slip stitch patterning really was not adding anything to this yarn. And it was also turning out really wide. Um, it was gonna be way too big on my foot. I tried it on just the end and it was like my foot was swimming in it. So I ripped it back, but I ripped all the way back till I was at 64 stitches instead of 72. And I think that will be better because, again, 
I don't think the yarn is as light a fingering weight as I felt like it was. It just seems that way. And there's probably some areas that are a little lighter than others. Although for the most part, like, yeah, there's like this, you can see that, that little area right there. That's definitely lighter than some of it. But for the most part, it's pretty consistent. Anyway, I decided that I was just going to do a plain stockinette sock because honestly, I kind of like how it's doing this sort of stripey thing. Um, I did not spin the yarn in any particular way to get it to do that. It's just how it did it. There's some barber pulled areas, which are the area, uh, you know, where the areas where you see more than one color. Then there's some where they all overlap with the same color, which is sort of like down there where I started. I think I'm just going to like it as a stockinette sock. That's, that's always my default anyway. So I've not done anything else to it. I just ripped back to the 64 stitch part and I got it back on the needles. I was going to tink back because I didn't want to have to pick up all of these stitches and I tinked back like one and a half rounds and I'm like, oh yeah. And I just, I ripped the needles out of it and tore it out and picked the stitches up. Surprisingly, they stayed in pretty well um, and they were easy to pick up. I was concerned because this this yarn has um, some really fluffy fiber in it. It's got some cashmere, it's got some silk, and um, these are actually Haya Haya Sharps I'm using. Usually I just use Haya Haya Steels, but I didn't pick Sharps specifically for this project, but my US Zeros that I have are Sharps, or at least the pair I picked up, and it's actually probably a good thing. I think this is a good set of needles to use for this yarn, so anyway. That's my plan. I'm just going to continue in stockinette. I did not rip back. You will see. Be proud of me because I didn't rip this completely out to start cuff down. Because I'm still not 100% sure of the sizing and I feel like I have more sizing flexibility going toe up. Um, but yeah, so it'll be interesting. I may do a non-Euclidean heel going up. Um, I know it's a different name the cuff down versus the toe up version is named something different it's the sarah jordan heel um, that she came out with and i have done it cuff down before i've never done the toe up version obviously so i may do that i don't know we'll see um, but i have honestly just not worked on this much at all because again sweater i was really really intent on getting this sweater finished so that's it the only other thing i have worked on is more of these colorway samples, which <laughs> was funny. You guys were like really into these. I got so many comments like, oh, it's so much fun seeing those. So I'll show you more if you'd like to see them. Actually, I'm in the middle of knitting one. And this is my Halloween colorway for this year. I haven't settled completely on a name yet, but I think it's going to be called Harvest Moon, which I realize is not super Halloween-y, but I, I did Dark and Stormy last year, and that felt very very much more Halloween-y, and I wanted something that was a little less, you know, purple, those those Halloween colors. So this is dark, or this is um, possibly Harvest Moon, possibly something else, um, Moon Shadows I've thought about. A walk in the moonlight I've thought about I don't know it's gonna be something with the moon because that's what this gold is and I know you usually think of silver for the moon but I'm envisioning that big golden moon like as the full moons coming up over the horizon you just see that big golden ball in the sky that's what I have in mind for this and then this is um, a shadowy green and this is a shadowy really deep gray and then this is a dark brownish with black undertones, I will say. Um, so they're all meant to be shadowy looks. Um, this might be your friendly neighborhood zombie in the shadows. You never know. <laughs> but anyway, that's what this is going to look like. It's a four stripe, four colors, which would be a one, two, three, four, five, six stripe repeat. Um, so anyway, that's the one I'm working on right now. And I will talk about this colorway a little bit more later on. Um, I Then ones I got in the mail this week, since you saw them last, um, this is Blue Ethereal, which this was a show special colorway. It'll eventually be in the shop. This is Night Jewels, which has been in the shop before. 
This is Inspiration, which was one of, one of my um, anniversary colorways. This is Positivity, which is my other anniversary colorway. Some of these, the ends aren't woven in because I asked the sample knitters to not weave the ends in. I'm not entirely sure why I asked them to not do that. That was sort of silly on my part, but I had a plan and I, it's not what I'm doing. Anyway, <laughs> um, this is Forest Floor, I think. Oh gosh. No, this is, there's a troll in the dungeon. I'm sorry. I've got several colorways that are similar colors and they're all older colorways and this is one of them. <laughs> so sometimes it makes me pause for a minute. Troll in the dungeon, good and plenty. This is another one of my really old colorways that I've brought back and it's suddenly like getting all kinds of attention. People are really liking this. So this definitely will be in the shop eventually. Raspberry truffle. I had to think about this one for a minute because this is another show special colorway. So raspberry truffle. And then a couple more that I worked on. Um, this one is s'more swirl. I made this a little bit short, but it'll be fine. <laughs> um, dark and stormy, which was the Halloween colorway last year. And I have one more. Where is it? Oh, here it is. This one is a brand new colorway. Now, this will be in the shop, but it's in the shop because it's going to be my pigskin party exclusive colorway this year. However, it'll be in the shop, so if you like it, you can get it, but just know that it'll only be available through the pigskin party season, which is basically the NFL season. So as of the day of the Super Bowl, that'll be the last day that you'll be able to buy it. Um, but it is, if you are taking part in the Down Cellar Studio pigskin party, um, event, <laughs> the knit along that runs all through the um, NFL season and you use this yarn, you'll be able to get extra points because I'm a pro shop sponsor. So anyway, this is called Birds of Play. <laughs> Let me tell you about the inspiration for this. Um, there are five NFL teams whose names are birds. Let me see if I can remember them all. Arizona Cardinals, Baltimore Ravens, Philadelphia Eagles, Atlanta Falcons, and Seattle Seahawks. <laughs> um, so I went with those as the initial inspiration, but rather than make the stripes the actual team colors, I went with the actual colors of the actual birds. I know, right? It's a twist. So that's what you end up with and what's really interesting because i had to do some research on this i learned a, the seattle seahawks a seahawk isn't even an actual bird like that's not the name of a real bird and the bird that the seahawks mascot is is actually a buzzard i can't remember what the name of it is it starts with an a it's a something buzzard <laughs> but the seattle buzzards doesn't have the same ring so I can understand why they would have called them Seahawks. At any rate, this is the colorway for the Pigskin Party exclusive color. I, this is, you're the first people seeing it because I haven't even put it up in the Pigskin Party boards yet. I just knit this yesterday. So I have to get this photographed and probably by the time this is up, it may be online. Um, it may actually even be in the shop. It will be a die to order. I usually do the pigskin party and splash pad party colorways as dies to order, um, but they'll ship out within two weeks. So you'll get it pretty quickly. So anyway, birds of play. I love how this turned out. Um, I'm just really happy with it. And I like the fact that I think this would be a very man friendly colorway if you wanted to knit, um, for a man. And the other thing is, even though they're based on those five teams, if none of those teams are the team that you root for, like you can still knit with this because it's not the actual team colors. It's just birds and everybody loves birds, right? Right. Okay. Let's move on to the cow. The that's your Q cow, which this is actually one of my entries for my own cow. The that's your Q cow because this was in my queue before the start of the cow. So it counts even though I don't get prizes or anything. Sometimes I don't take part in my own cows, but this time I am, which is exciting. Okay, so 
uh, prizes. I decided I would do prizes for the month of August from the chatter thread, and I drew two because we had 315 posts in that thread through the month of August, which is a phenomenal. So thank you so much for your enthusiasm for this cow. I think it's been a lot of fun so far, and I'm really enjoying seeing everything that you guys are knitting from your queue. My queue is growing as a result because I keep seeing really neat things, and it's like, I want to make that, so it's now being added to my queue. But I did two prize winners from posts number two through 315. Now, obviously, some of those posts in there are mine as well, but miraculously, random number generator did not land on me for once. Usually it does. <laughs> So I have two winners and the prizes for the That's Your Cue, these monthly prizes that I'm gonna do are going to be pattern prizes because I figure if you're knitting something out of your cue, that means you're removing at least one pattern from your cue. So let's put another one in it. How about that? So if you are a winner, you can choose any pattern or patterns up to $10 US that I can gift to you through Ravelry. So that is what you get. Our two winners, the first one was random number generator number 186, and that post was by Maria, who is Seductive Berry, so congratulations, Maria. And the second one that was chosen was post number 51, and that is Iona Paint, who is Christine. So Christine and Maria, congratulations. Thank you so much for taking part in this cow. Please PM me on Ravelry or send me an email, either one. Um, and let me know what pattern or patterns up to $10 total um, that you guys would each like. And I will gift those to you through Ravelry. So, yay. And you can add more fun things to knit up in the future. All right. Upcoming events. Again, I will be at the New Jersey Sheep and Fiber Festival this coming weekend. I'm driving out on Friday. My husband is going to the show with me. So, yay. Initially, I really, really wanted him to come with me because my booth was outside and that would mean I'd have to put my easy up tent up and that's hard to do by myself. I can do it, but it's hard to do. So he was going to be coming along. But then last week, I thought it was Friday maybe, I got an email from the organizer saying they had a couple of spots open up inside one of the barns. Did I want one? I'm like, yes. <laughs> So I'm actually inside a barn. I was supposed to be outside of barn number three, I believe. I'm now inside barn number four. I am in booth 4C9. So barn four in the center, which I think is what the C stands for, booth nine. And it's actually on the corner of two aisles. So it should be easy to find. Um, Unfortunately, the program booklets already went to print before that change happened. So if you get the program booklet, you'll still see me as being outside. But if you go there and find that I'm not there, don't panic. I am there. I'm just inside barn number four. Um, if you look online, though, they're supposed to have updated that map and that information. So hopefully you will find me. I can't wait to do this show. I've never vended at this show before. I love doing new shows and I love being in new areas because I've not done, have I done a New Jersey show before? I don't think I have. Not that I can think of off the top of my head. I don't think so. No, I haven't because I had to do the whole sales tax thing for the first time in New Jersey, set that up. So, okay, yeah, New Jersey this coming weekend. Yay, I will be in barn four. Please come say hi. And I'm sure I'll be, you know, wandering around the show as well because, you know, I love fiber festivals. And since my husband will be there, I'll be able to wander. All right, let's move into 10%. 10%, I finished listening to the Great Courses um, recording that I was listening to through Audible. It was Food, A Cultural Culinary History by Ken Albala, A-L-B-A-L-A. -A -L -A. It was so good. It's over 18 hours long. It's 36 lectures. It literally starts at like the beginning of time all the way through current day. I don't remember when this was actually published. So it's not like right now, right now. It's at least a few years old. I want to say it probably was recorded pre 2016. I think maybe I'm basing that just on 
political stuff because he doesn't mention certain political things that I think he may have mentioned if they were taking place when he was talking about the current day. Um, that's what was really interesting about this book. When I downloaded it, I originally thought it was just going to be like all about food. And it is about food, but it's about so much more than just food history. It's about food in history and how much of history impacted food. I, I'm not exactly even sure. It's just everything is connected. I mean, we know this. Everything in life is connected. Nothing exists in its own little island. Um, food, but it, it was just very eye-opening to me to see how much of things that we know about food and the way we do things about food were brought about either because of political stuff going on or religious stuff. Politics and religion had such a huge impact on food. And I mean, politics and religion have, have had a huge impact historically on pretty much everything, but I just never thought about it from that angle. So that was very interesting. It was also so very interesting just to hear about how foods and different food traditions moved around the world um, at, at different points in history, how that happened. I thought it was really interesting how he he very much touched on almost the appropriation, I guess you would say, of different food traditions by, you know, colonizers of, you know, appropriating the, the food customs and, and foods themselves of the, the countries that they basically took over from the indigenous people. Um, food traditions that came about based on slavery and the, the foods that slaves brought with them into their countries that they were brought to for slavery. It was just fascinating. I mean, so much of it. Um, and then in the current day, he talks a lot more about, well, not just the current day, current day, but like within the last 50 to 100 years, like the, the different moves through food trends, um, how, you know, war, wartime impacted different food practices, um, you know, the whole move towards commercialized food products versus, you know, getting your food from the farm or from the producer or producing it yourself, um, packaged foods, even the health food movements and how, you know, big corporations tried to take that over by packaging their own health foods, which I mean, we still have that today. I've noticed that a lot because I do, I do eat certain things that are considered, they're vegetarian stuff and, you know, like Morningstar foods or things like that. There's some things that I like and I get, but honestly, some of it isn't healthy. I've come to realize like, just cause it's vegetarian does not mean it's healthy. You know what I mean? Not, a lot of it can be, but it not necessarily is, especially when it's talking about the processed versions of these foods. So it was just very interesting. If you're into that kind of stuff or into history in general, I would highly recommend this book. Again, it was called Food, A Cultural Culinary History by Ken Albala. And even though I've listened to the whole thing, I still have it on my phone because I, I was telling Bill about different parts of it. And he's like, oh, I'd really like to listen to that. My husband has a very short attention span when it comes to audiobooks, so I know he'll never listen to the whole thing, but we're going to listen to it in the car on the way out and back um, to New Jersey this weekend. So it'll be a, give us something fun to listen to that and some ologies episodes. Um, other than that, I think we have most of our vacation plans pretty well solidified, which is very good. We sat the other night for many, many hours, but I had already planned it. Like I thought it, I was in the mindset to do it. So it was good. Um, there's a few things that we weren't able to, to finalize online, like, um, you know, reservation kind of stuff. So I have to make phone calls. The, the kind of twist in that is we're going to Quebec. <laughs> Specifically, we are going to the Gasp Peninsula, the Gaspe Peninsula. That's mainly where we're going to be. And we're also going to be spending time in Quebec City. 
Um, but, you know, they speak French there. And while a lot of the websites do have the, you know, link that you can click and it translates everything to English, some of them don't. So I've been relying a lot on my limited four years of high school and two semesters of college French. <laughs> That was a long time ago. That and the whole copy and paste into an online translator um, to figure things out. And yesterday I had my first experience of having to call a campground to make reservations. And I had to speak French and I had to listen to them in French, at least as far as I was able to get to the point to ask them if they spoke English and they did, thankfully. <laughs> so we were able to do most of the important things in English. I realized that a lot, like, I think the majority of places, especially that like campgrounds and places that take reservations for travelers probably do speak English, but I was very proud of myself because I was able to speak enough French to get through to the point in the conversation that I got the woman to be able to speak English to me. I was proud of myself. And I closed the conversation in French. I'm a very firm believer that if you travel outside of your native country to a country that speaks a language other than your own, that you probably, it's kind and polite to make the effort, to at least be able to speak basic things in that country's language. That and know what the customs are, like the basic customs of civility in a certain country. Know what those are so that you don't go making an ass out of yourself, especially if you're American, because we're really good at that. I'm an American, I love my country, but I recognize that we can be jerks. I try not to be a jerk. <laughs> and I do try to make an effort to, you know, when in Rome, you know, be Romish. <laughs> Speak Italian, I don't know. I've never been to Rome, and I don't speak Italian, but if I ever go to Rome, I will at least learn how to say hello and good morning and where is the bathroom and things like that in Italian. Okay, let's move on from 10% into shop news, and we're going to start with monthly makes. I realized after I recorded last week that I never even mentioned monthly makes, but I know you guys know it's going on, so I guess I don't have to mention it every single episode, but... August is now over, so I have updated the Grand Grams um, totals of grams for everybody participating um, in that. There has been some movement in the, the upper five-ish uh, people for the Grand Grams totals, so check it out. I love to see that, like people moving up. It's like, whoo, she got a lot done that time. Maria is still at the very top of the heap. <laughs> The woman is prolific. Goodness. Um, anyway, so yes, the Grand Grams listing has been updated, so you can check that out at the top of the chatter thread in the Fiber Nymph Dye Works group. And I have two winners to announce, and that would be the chatter thread winner for August and the finished object thread winner for August. First, let me show you your prize choices. As always, I have three prize choices for you to choose from. The first is a skein of Arowana, which is on Bedazzled, so it's sparkly, and it's a variegated in greens and grays and greens, <laughs> a little bit of natural coloring in there, very light gray. So that's one option. Another option is Positivity, which was one of my anniversary colors this year. This is on Ridgetop Fingering, so this is non-superwash. Um, which you can still use for socks if you hand wash or, you know, if you want to do mitts or hats or cow or whatever, but it is self-striping. And the last one is fiber. I decided it's a nice fallish color, so why not celebrate September with this one? And this one is called Fading Fire, and it is on mixed BFL, so it's got that light and dark BFL in there that I love so much. The dark BFL gives it such depth. So anyway, four ounces of that. Those are your three prize options. So if you are one of the winners, please PM me on Ravelry. Let me know both your full mailing information as well as your top two prize choices. And whichever ones are available or whichever one is available, that is the one I will send to you. Okay, so the chatter thread winner was posts number 707 through 788 and random number generator chose post number 725 and that is 
Leaner, who is Eileen. So congratulations, Eileen. Let me know which of, which of these are your top two prize choices. And then the FO thread winner, we had 17 posts in there again this month. I was the first one. So posts number two through 17, random number generator chose number three. And that is Will Travel for Yarn, who is Maya. So congratulations, Maya. Again, please let me know which of these two, which of these three prizes are your top two choices and send me your full mailing info, which I'm sure I have, but send it to me anyway, it makes life easier and I will get your prize out to you. So congratulations. I just want to mention with regard to prizes, I know I have one prize from July that I just heard from the person. Um, I'll be getting that out. It's sitting on my shipping table. I need to ship it yet. So that's, I think I'm up to date with prizes. Also with regard to the first half of the year monthly makes, um, if you earned a free skein or free braid of fiber, I'm almost positive I've heard from everyone and I think I've gotten everybody's out. I have one person who I have her stuff already. So if you haven't gotten it, Joanne, I'm talking to you. <laughs> um, it's ready to go. I'm going to be mailing it today. However, if, if you have not gotten your prize, please contact me, your, your skein of earned yarn. It's completely conceivable that I could have totally dropped the ball. I don't think I did. I think everything else is up to date, but just in case, please, please let me know because I don't want you to sit there and think I'm being a jerk. <laughs> I don't like being a jerk. Um, so anyway, yeah, but I, I think I'm up to date with everything like that. Okay, what else? I did add the shawl pins to the shop, so they're in the shop right now. As far as updates, I told you I would let you know when I'm going to have Halloween stuff in the shop. I thought I'd be able to do it this week, but I'm not. I'm, I'm so running out of time getting ready for this show. I have to finish show stuff up first. So what I'm going to do is there will be a shop update next Friday. Let's see. Where, where are my notes? Sorry. Friday, September 13th. Friday the 13th, <laughs> I will be doing an update with Halloween colorways as well as a whole bunch of stuff from my show stock because this weekend is my last regular show of this year. Needles up, I just do self-striping, so I will not be adding very much in the line of self-striping to the shop from my show stock other than Halloween colorways um, because I'll be hanging onto those four needles up. But otherwise, like variegated stuff, fiber, um, mini sets, gradient, well, nope, gradients will be going with me to needles up because that's a subset of self-striping. Um, anyway, there will be a whole bunch of things, but that will be next Friday, September 5th, uh, 13th at 5 p.m. Eastern. But this Friday, uh, also at 5 p.m. Eastern, so that will be Friday, September 6th, I'm going to be doing a kitchen sink sale. <laughs> Which, let me explain this. It's going to sort of be like grab bags. I mean, they will be grab bags, but it's different than my regular grab bags that I do. Usually when I do grab bags in the shop, I list them all out and I say, okay, grab bag A, this is all fingering weight yarn and it has a total of this many yards. You know, grab bag B, this is fingering and sport weight, you know, and I give you some definition of what you can expect in your grab bag. The kitchen sinks are not going to be like that at all. They are basically just going to be exactly that. It's going to be anything and everything and the kitchen sink. So if you like a surprise and you like a really good deal, the kitchen sink sale will be perfect for you because it could be anything from lace weight yarn all the way up through bulky. It will probably, well, it will most likely, it will most definitely be a combination of several weights of yarn in each kitchen sink package. It could be a combination of semi-solids, variegated, self-striping. It'll be anything like that. Um, it may be some like things that I would normally call dire secret stash. So like regular colorways that just I've never made it into the shop or maybe colorways that I had as club colorways and never put into the shop. Um, you know, things like that. It could be some oopsies, um, which are things that, you know, something went wrong in the dye process, so it's not perfect, but 
it's still perfectly usable so if you're not you know oh boy we're getting that sun thing going on again here let me move this okay there that's better um, so it could be things like that. It could also just be plain, regular, wonderful yarn that has been in the inventory for a while and I want to move it along. Whatever. It could be anything. You're not going to know until you get it, but if you like a surprise and you like a good deal, these will be fun for you. Um, I will put details about like how much how many grams? I think I'll probably do grams are in the packages. I'm hoping to make them fairly uniform, but I will price them as I think they should be priced. They will all be greatly, greatly discounted. Again, I will put that information in the listing. And domestic shipping will be free. I mean, it will be included in the price of the kitchen sink package, so it will basically be free shipping. Canadian... Um, International shipping to Canada will be just an extra $5 and international shipping anywhere else will just be an extra $10. You'll be getting at least 400 grams of yarn. So that's at least four full skeins. The equivalent, it probably will not be full skeins. Could be full skeins. It could be some mini skeins. It could be some half skeins all mixed in there. Um, but it'll be at least 400 grams of yarn. So that's a really, really good deal on shipping as well as on the yarn. Um, yeah, so there you go. I anticipate that all of the kitchen sink packages will be different. There will be probably a little bit of overlap, but they'll all be different configurations. So I will have those up. I don't know how many I'll have up because I haven't finished putting them all together yet, but whatever I have, they will be in the shop. And again, those will go live on Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Again, I won't be here because I'll be in New Jersey, but I don't have to be here for you to be able to access them. So that's that. And I think that is everything. Hope you're having a good week. I will talk to you again next week, one day. I'm not sure which day, but I will record next week, and I'll see you later. Bye.